Hey family, CJ Jamie Pillai is here with Anna Shaolin with your weekly update. Um, just want to real quickly say before I get started, thank you so much to everyone that has been praying for my family um, and sending in your condolences. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, for those of you that haven't watched the webinar, um, I will be going ahead and emailing everyone back individually um, during the weekend. So during this weekend that's coming up, I will be taking the time to reach out to you personally because it means so much to my family and I that you were willing to reach out to us as well. And we definitely felt your prayer power all the way um, in North Carolina. So no matter where in the world you were, we definitely um, felt that and received that and had a lot of great experiences during a very, very challenging time. For those of you that have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, 2018 really started off with a proverbial bang uh, for my family. I went to go call my mom. I usually speak to her on Sundays or Mondays. So those are usually her days off. And I didn't get to speak to her on the 31st of December. And I was super excited because uh, Steve Valeri and I just got done talking about all the plans that we had for Enter Shaolin. And for those of you that have been following along with us, uh, you might already know this, but I know some of you probably don't. Um, some of my biggest reasons for doing Inner Shaolin is to be able to help people. And some of that is inside of my family as well as the family members we, we meet here through Inner Shaolin and the family members to come in the near future as well, um, as well as people that have nothing to do with Inner Shaolin. God has made me a giver. I love to help people. And uh, fortunately, I was not able to help my mom. Uh, she was struggling with some addictions and uh, we don't know the cause of death yet, but she was 54. And um, it does seem that she did go peacefully in her sleep and that it was a heart attack that caused it. And I know that she was doing some drinking and she took a prescription pain pill um, of her boyfriend's, which is a big no-no. So a lot of people are probably like, why would you even bring this stuff up? Uh, the reason I want to bring it up is because I want to bring awareness. I firmly believe that when we're willing to be transparent about our struggles or um, our loved ones' struggles and things like that and, and different things like that, it can be a catalyst to help people overcome things. And I know that we have some members that through their martial arts and training with us have overcome similar addictions and things like that. And so I do want to bring it up because life is precious and it's short. You're never guaranteed a tomorrow. Even your next breath is not guaranteed. So uh, you know, if people are, are watching this and they're struggling or maybe have family members and loved ones that are struggling with these things, I just want to let you know you're not alone and that there is a way to help those people only if they're willing to. And my mom, unfortunately, was not one. I did find out uh, during the time period that not only myself, but my brother, my father, um, as well as my grandparents, you know, tried various ways to reach out to my mom throughout the past 10 years. And... Unfortunately, she just was not willing to receive it because she was hurting so much inside that she didn't want to admit that there was a problem when she was sober. And now she's not here. And at first I was really frustrated when I found out on Monday when I went to call her and, and tell her about all of our great plans because um, I was really hoping that, you know, eventually I'll be able to bring her up here and just allow her to just, you know, spend the rest of her life doing whatever it is that makes her happy instead of working a job that, you know, she didn't feel happy and satisfied with. I wanted to give her options to be able to do whatever it is that makes her tick. And in that, I was hoping that would also give her life more of a meaning and purpose to help her beat the different addictions that she was struggling with. Now, unfortunately, I didn't obviously get to get to that point. Um, and it was really sad when I went to call and talk to her and share all the good news because she, um, one thing I loved about mom is she believed everything that I had planned out. She knew I could do it. Uh, Sifu Larry shared a conversation that he had with her once where, cause I was, I was saying um, that I was sad that I wasn't gonna be able to make her proud because I wasn't able, I'm not gonna be able to do those things for her that I promised for her and um, that I wanted to share with her as well and elaborate on how we were gonna get to that point in 2018. And he said, you already made your mom proud. And he shared a, a beautiful conversation with uh, with me that he had with her by accident when he meant to call me one day. So um, so that really, really helped as well. But um, when I went to call, I, I literally, um, literally just broke down. I started wailing on the ground because it was just a shock. It was a shock to my system. You know, what do you mean my mom's dead? <laughs> what I what I just talked to her like not even like well it was about a week ago that I talked to her we usually talked at least once a week 
Um, it was a little bit over one week. It was the 22nd that I last talked to her. Sometimes every once in a while we have a week that goes by because both of us are busy and, and we don't call each other. Um, but generally we speak at least once a week. And the last time we talked, we talked for, uh, I think, almost three hours total. Like there was a couple times she had to get off the phone and call me back or vice versa. But it was close to three hours total that we spoke that day. And um, it was a great conversation. You know, it ended on a great note. And um, But if you would have told me that would have been my last conversation with my mom, I would have been like, no way, because she was 54, right? That's still really, really young. There's still so much more to live for. So when I first heard it, I first thought her boyfriend was joking with me, but he wasn't. And um, then I just fell to the ground and started wailing. And then I had this, for lack of a better term, kind of an out-of-body experience where I could you know, see myself on the ground, just you know, on the floor, just crying and crying and, and just like, you know, wailing, why, you know, why now, why right now? And um, why is this happening type of thing? And my spirit was like, what are you doing? And then I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing? And my spirit says, don't you know she's at peace? It's okay. And once I, that resonated over me, because even as I remember, as I was crying and just wailing and stuff, part of me felt like, I did already feel like that before I had that out of body experience. Like, why am I wailing right now? Why am I wailing? And why, why am I just, you know, losing it? And it was because obviously, like, I want my mom still here, obviously. You know, my flesh is like, hey, I want my mom here. I want her to see uh, her granddaughter graduate. When I have more kids, I want her to be able to, you know, to see them grow up and hold them and different things like that. I want her to be there when I get remarried, um, you know, to a wonderful, amazing man that I'm going to have amazing adventures with in life. Um... I want her to be there, you know, when Jaya got married and, and had kids and stuff like that, because she was young enough to do all those things. But now, now she's gone. And I was a little frustrated. But then when I realized, you know, she is at peace, her soul is at rest and it is at peace. And every time I wanted to get frustrated, I just kept feeling, why am I getting frustrated? She's at peace. And um, that's one of the, the things that just kept carrying on throughout the week as I, you know, drove down. And I had crazy things happen, you know, um, on the way down, I had to get an SUV because I wanted to be able to get some of the stuff that I was bringing back um, for my mom's and stuff, some of the stuff that she had for my childhood and, and maybe like a couple mementos and things like that to remember her by. Um, so I wanted to make sure I had uh, plenty of space and everything for, you know, just our luggage, obviously, for the week and, and plus all those different things. So I ended up getting a flat, like after I had just left 30 minutes, right? I get a flat, then I had to go out of my way to get a new rental car that was comparable because there was only one place that had one and it was just all this crazy stuff and I could have lost it. And I could have got really, really, really frustrated and, and probably no one would even blame me, right? If I just had a total breakdown and just, just lost it all, right? But what good would that have done? What good would that have done? It would have delayed me more. It would have hurt me more. I would have been more physically drained. I would have just been a hot mess. And then I also would have been not just sharing that hot messness with myself, but my daughter would have been on the other receiving end of that too as well. And that would have affected her spirit and how she was handling the grieving process as well. So there was a lot of different things going on. And I just, you know, over time in my life, I've realized that, you know, obviously bad stuff happens, right? We can't avoid it forever. Things do happen. Things that we wish didn't happen, happen. Uh, things that could have been avoided sometimes happen because people are not willing to get help. Or sometimes we... No, we shouldn't do something, but we do it anyways. And then we suffer the consequences and stuff like that. And once those things are done, those decisions are made and those actions happen, there's nothing you can do about it but learn from the lesson and grow from it. Or you can keep making those same mistakes, but I highly don't recommend that part. And so through this process, I really just wanted to, you know, A, be able to really honor my mom and her, her spirit and, and to know um, I could be there for my family and be a rock for them and to help them during this time and this transition. Um, I also wanted to show my daughter what healthy grieving looks like and stuff like that. And this is not to like grieve shame anyone. I don't even know if that's a term, but you know, everyone's always like, oh, don't shame this person or that person. There's all these like, you know, very sensitive uh, things going on in the world uh, the past couple years. So it's not to say that, you know, 
getting depressed is uh, wrong per se if you lose a loved one or, um, you know, crying and crying for days on end is wrong. You know, if that helps you through the grieving process, then it's okay. But if it's hurting you more than it's helping you, then that's where you really need to take a step back and reevaluate what's going on and what serves your greatest good, which is also going to serve the greatest good of humanity through the process. And, um, and that's really just one of those things. So there was a couple times that my family members were worried about me um, <laughs> because they were like, are you okay? Like, you're not bawling your eyes out. You're not this and you're not that. And so I had to share with them my experience that I had where I did you know, fall to the ground and I was willing. And I did cry myself to sleep, I would say for the first three nights for sure. Um, just being just remorseful, like, uh, I wish I would have been able to see her this past year. You know, we had several plans, uh, but then she was busy and I was busy type of thing. And, you know, we were supposed to see each other this upcoming summer for like several weeks and we were both really super excited about it. And now that's not happening. And so, you know, that was, that was frustrating. Sorry about that. I forgot to put my phone on vibrate. So there was things like that and like, oh, you know, I should have called her, you know, on December 31st and shared my plans then instead of on Monday and just all these different things. These like what ifs and, and things that we beat ourselves up with. But I realized like that's not going to do me any good. It doesn't change what's happened and it doesn't, and it's not going to help me in the future for that matter either, except for to just, like I said, learn from those mistakes. So now, you know, I'm reaching out more to my grandparents. You know, I might have only spoke to them, you know, once a month before, and usually I was the one calling them. Um, but now, you know, they're reaching out back and forth with me. And my aunt Lynn, who I've not been super close with since I was a kid, who's my mom's sister, now she's like, is it okay if I call you? Um, you know, because I, I talk to your mom all the time and I just I just need someone to speak to. And I'm like, of course, I'd love, I'd love to talk to you more and be closer with you. So um, during this difficult time, you know, my family was able to come together more and it sucks that sometimes these bad events are what drives that, you know, but it also got us, um, gave us the ability to share our love for each other more and to really be each other's rock. And I'm so grateful for what I do at Enter Shaolin because it actually helped me so, so, so much during this process in, in many, many different ways. You know, one, uh, you know, being my own boss and being able to say it's okay, take, you know, these days off and also having Steve Larry, you know, to, you know, man the helms um, for me while I'm gone. And, you know, there was a couple times he had to check in with me for things that he didn't know how to fix or do um, and that I was able to take care of. But it was nice to know that I had a good support system um, and that I was able to like physically take those things off as well. And to also just be able, um, you know, I was able to save up money uh, this past summer. For those of you that have been following us, some of you already know uh, why I was able to do that and stuff like that. So I was able to help with the expenses with the funeral and, and share the cost and that, and that burden um, with my brother and stuff like that and be able to go to my grandparents you know, you don't have to worry about this, you know, don't, don't worry about it because they really didn't have the money to do that. And just being able to bless them with taking that burden off of them felt so amazing and, and just different things like that. Um, but also my training, my training as well was very, very paramount in how I've been able to handle this grieving process. Um, I've, said this before, <laughs> and some of you that have been following along with Enter Shaolin for a long time have probably heard me say this, your martial arts and your Kung Fu training is some of the best therapy that money can buy or can't even buy because it's really priceless at the end of the day because you have to work on yourself internally, especially, I'm not necessarily sure about like things like MMA because um, I don't train in that, that's an external thing, but definitely on the internal martial arts side, um, it really forces you to evaluate yourself before you fight an opponent, you're fighting yourself. You're, you're fighting uh, your bad habits, you're realizing your weaknesses and figuring out how to work through them, overcome them, um, and, and different things like that. And it really helps mold you into a better person. We always talk about, you know, here at Anna Shelley, we want to help a person, mind, body, and spirit. And that's exactly what we do. And that's exactly why I was able to handle this with a lot more grace. And I don't just want to say it's just that because, 
you know, there's my, my spiritual practices, which were definitely huge in this, this process, you know, my, my belief in our creator in my savior and, you know, the prayers, um, that everyone else was doing as well as my own personal prayers for strength and, um, you know, for ego and pride and things like that to just be null and void. Cause you know how sometimes you hear like when someone dies, there's all these fights and crazy things going on in families. And it's like, really? Like, this is not the time people. And there was uh, a little bit of a tiff. Uh, my, my mom's uh, boyfriend did get a little belligerent one day. Um, but you know, the next day he, you know, apologized and stuff like that. And, and so it could have been a whole lot worse is what I'm saying, but it, but it wasn't. And it was mainly because of the things that each of us as an individual chose to do. And I know for me personally, the reason I was able to be that rock and that support for my family was because I made sure like, okay, now's not the time to slack on, on taking care of my health. You know, I need to make sure that I'm continuing to eat healthy. Now's not the time to slack on my spiritual practices. I need that connection. You know what I mean? I need to keep that strong. And now's not the time to stop doing my training because once again, I need that to help center me and keep me whole as well too. So all these, these three main things were what kept me together. So I, I said, okay, I'm not, I know I'm not gonna have a lot of time. You know, I'm probably gonna, you know, not get a lot of sleep, which I didn't. <laughs> um, so I'm not gonna be able to do my full training regimen. Plus I'm gonna be making phone calls and having to visit here, there and collect different things together um, and spend time with my family and, and take care of Jaya and all these different things. So what can I do that's going to be the most impactful during this time to help keep me centered and whole? And that was my Tai Chi and my Qigong, which I did every single day. I usually did it in the morning before I showered. Uh, there was a couple times I think I decided to shower first and then do it. And then there was one time that I did it in the evening uh, because it ended up being like a very hectic morning. But I did it every single day. And I know um, that was something that A, helped me be able to sleep more soundly once I was able to fall asleep, which was kind of difficult on some nights. Uh, but once I was able to quiet my mind, the quality of sleep I got was really, really great for a short amount of time. And it also just helped me have that extra energy that I needed throughout the day. And it also helped just me get my mind and spirit together, you know what I mean? And just get my mind and body and spirit to work as one, as a whole, and which is what I needed to do. Um, so for people that going through a tough time, I just want to say like, don't allow your depression or your sadness or whatever crazy moments going on at that time to keep you away from those systems that you're currently doing that will help you through those times. Um, Steve Valerian and I are going to actually do a podcast on this. So I'll share more details and things later, but I just wanted to share a little bit of that with you now and just say, you know, when the going gets tough, you need to be tough and you need to get going. And I'm not saying don't cry or don't get frustrated or whatever. Just don't let those feelings consume you and take control. It's okay to acknowledge them. It's okay to feel them, but don't let them dwell in your spirit for too long and take hold of you where they're going to now be in control instead of you being in control of your emotions. And that's one of the biggest things I, I know that Kung Fu in martial arts has personally helped me do, especially someone that's, you know, got A to D, I'm an empath, you know, I've got a lot of, uh, of high energy and high emotions and stuff like that. And you know, a bazillion thoughts going through my head at any given moment. And so my martial arts, my Kung Fu has helped me to be able to quiet my mind a whole, whole, whole lot more. There's still moments where it gets a little crazy and it's racing um, in my mind. But for the most part, there's a lot of times where people are like, so what are you thinking about? And I'm like, nothing. There was once upon a time that that probably never, ever came out of my mouth. Like I would say the majority of my life, there was always something on my mind if someone asked me. Um, so, and there's a lot of times that it's just, you know, peaceful and, and quiet. And it's also um, something that helps me connect with my spiritual practices more and connect with my creator more because I'm able to be more still and quiet. Therefore, I can listen better as well. Um, and, and also it helps with the negative self talk, the negative chatter that a lot of us have in our brains. You know, there's a saying that, you know, we are our worst enemy. And nine times out of 10, I'd say the majority of people would agree with that. Uh, a lot of times the negativity that's in our lives is a direct reflection of how we feel about ourselves. You know, whether we have low self-esteem or 
Uh, we just don't believe we're able to achieve certain things like that. We just look down on ourselves and different things like that. So my martial arts has helped me greatly, greatly, greatly with that as well. And, and just being more common centered and being able to really evaluate a situation and go, okay, I can react like this, sure, but is it in my best interest to do that? You know, like, let me step back and, and really evaluate the situation. You know, it was beautiful because by me choosing to be present in the moment, to be loving, to being, um, you know, high energy, but not overbearing, you know, type of thing. And, and just keeping my spirits up high during the process, being there to love on my family, to support them and encourage them. It enabled my daughter, Jaya, who was just 11, to have her first uh, major, major loss um, in a beautiful way. Like she, she went through the grieving process similar to me. She, yeah, she cried. Yeah, she got a little bit frustrated here and there. Um, but overall, she's had an overwhelming sense of peace and calmness as well. And I had to go, well, why was that? That's because her mommy was that way. And so that, that was beautiful, you know, but I also, it was funny. I had, um, one of, uh, my, my cousin, my cousin, um, her husband is first time I actually met him. He actually came up to me, uh, during my mom's viewing and, and asked me like, are you okay? Cause he thought I was just holding everything in. Right. He's like, all right, look, I see everyone else break down, but you lady, like I, I talked to your brother and we both agree you're a strong woman, but maybe you're just too strong. Right. And I'm like, that's actually like totally contradictory to how I train, but okay, roll with your bad self. And, and so um, it was just cute. And so I'd explain to him, like, you know, I did have a breakdown. Um, it was short, it was brief because I had that, you know, out of body experience and my spirit kind of set me straight and I realized my mom's at peace. So yeah, okay, my flesh is uh, selfish and do I want her here? Absolutely. Do I want to be able to do all those things I had planned with her? Heck yeah, right? Um, but now she's not suffering, you know, she wouldn't let anyone help her here on this earth, but now she's able to be at peace and at rest. So now her soul is not troubled. She does not feel any pain, no sorrow, no what ifs, all these things are now gone from her. And for what it's worth, like that makes me have peace as well, doing that she is now at peace as, as well. And so I said, and you know, and I, and I said, my training, my training helps keep me focused. So I shared a little bit of Tai Chi and Qigong with him as well. And it was just really cool um, to see someone else go like, whoa, you know, that's interesting. As a matter of fact, for the, for the rest of that week, um, my, my cousin's boyfriend or sorry, boyfriend, husband um, kept just like looking at me every once in a while. I'm just like, I don't know about this lady. <laughs> you know, you get to see like he was like, she's not normal. And I get that a lot. No, I'm not normal. And I don't plan to be normal anytime soon. So, but I just wanted to share that with all of you uh, because I, I we get emails all the time, people that are struggling with health uh, related issues or financial issues or uh, relationship issues, all these different struggles and, and different formats coming out and stuff like that. And a lot of times people just give up on the systems that are the things that are gonna help them not only um, be steady through that process, but survive that process and actually thrive throughout that process. So I want to just encourage all of you, you know, when that crazy situation comes up or something unexpected happens, don't throw away your systems that will help you survive and thrive through those times. Those are the times you need to like say, okay, I know things are about to get crazy. I know that I got this challenge over here, but that's the time for you to persevere, not throw it away. You know, they say, like, don't throw away the, the baby with the bath water. <laughs> um, don't, you don't throw away the baby with the bath water. You, you need it. So so keep those systems in place and, and take the time, even if it's just 30 minutes a day, because that's about all I had was 30 minutes a day. And even if it's just 15 minutes a day, even if it's just 10 minutes a day, take that little bit of time to spend with yourself and do something really, really good for your mind, body, and spirit so you can show up in the world in a better way. And so you can, um, you know, survive whatever that challenge is in a more rational, um, put together kind of way. And so you don't find yourself in a pit of despair or woe is me or depression and different things like that. And I've suffered from all of those things. So if I can do it, I know that 
all of you can do it. So keep your systems in place, know the things that you need to do for yourself to be the best version of you, and make sure when the going gets tough that you don't back down from continuing to do those practices because those are the things that are gonna help you be a better version of yourself and to survive as well as thrive in any challenge that's going to come your way. So that was that's the main message that I want to share with all of you is that you know qigong, tai chi, it definitely helps. Wing Chun, all these things, everything that you do definitely helps. But if I had to say the two uh, things that we teach that help the most with with your mind, body, and spirit, and your energy and your health, it's definitely the qigong and tai chi. So if you've been kind of like, uh, that's for old people, or uh, it's too slow for me, or uh, I don't know if I got the time, I highly encourage you to take the time to bless yourself with those gift of qigong and tai chi. Start with the qigong, work your way up to the tai chi. Um, and speaking of tai chi, our next seminar is going to be at the end of April. I will have the exact dates for all of you next week. We decided we're gonna do it in New York City. And uh, so that's New York City, New York, for those of you that don't know, because I know we have people around the world that are watching this. So as soon as I have the information on the hotel and all the information, um, I will provide that to you all. I expect to have it by the end of next week. So by next uh, Friday, I should have everything planned out. Also, speaking of seminars, we decided that we are not going to do the Empower Conference. Uh, we started getting some information sent to us, um, just getting more of a overview of what to expect type of thing um, and, and who the audience is and whatever. And we realized that it really isn't our target audience. You know, sure, they are martial artists and most people are probably like, well, isn't a martial artist your target audience? Yes and no, it depends on the type of martial artist. Uh, we definitely are looking for people that are looking to elevate their mind, body, and spirit and are open-minded to doing those things, are open-minded to trying new things and testing new things and, and stuff like that. Um, we basically are looking for people that are lifetime learners and seekers. They're not looking for a shortcut. You know, They're willing to put in the time and the effort and there's no end date to when that time is. They know that this is going to be a Kung Fu journey for the rest of their lives. And so um, when we really looked over everything, we realized that it's definitely not our target market. And if we're gonna spend the money that we were gonna spend to fly out there, get hotel rooms, all these different things, uh, we wanna make sure that we're going to be spending our money wisely to do so and putting ourselves in front of an audience that is going to be receptive to the information that we're sharing. So we decided instead of doing that in Fort Lauderdale, we are going to hold our own full seminar on No Deck Na in Fort Lauderdale. Um, so the dates um, on that will be the same time as the Empower, most likely, um, or just maybe slightly a little bit different. Once again, I'm gonna do my best to get that all situated. I've got you know hotels that I'm gonna be calling and contacting, and you know probably recalling. So I remember the Washington D.C. I had to call people. I don't even know how many times to sometimes get people to call back and I'm like, don't these people want to make some money? But <laughs> it's it's funny uh, sometimes. So I'll be making lots of phone calls next week and getting everything situated on, you know, what's the best, uh, you know, airport for you to fly into and what's the best hotel to stay at, which will be obviously the one that we hold the event at. Um, but if, you know, for some reason you want to stay at another hotel that's close by, I'll have alternative hotels and different things as well. Um, so hopefully there'll be something for everyone's budget to help with that. So the first one, like I said, is going to be at the end of April. That's going to be in New York City. And that is going to be a No Deck Na Tai Chi seminar. For those of you that are wondering what you can work on, um, we talked a little bit about that in the webinar today. Mainly, you just want to concentrate on the first third of the Tai Chi. Uh, Sifu Fu said we probably won't actually physically cover all of that because he's really going to go in depth. I don't know if any of you have seen some of our Silam Tao webinars that we did where he just breaks down everything like very minutely. That's what you can expect if you've seen those before. Um, and probably some of you are like, hey, speaking of that, when are those getting started again? Um, so when we started those, our camera equipment wasn't that great and we've upgraded our stuff since then. So we are gonna start going back and refilming them and um, we're going to start from scratch. But there's a couple things that we're gonna refilm before we get to that. Like we're gonna refilm Qigong, uh, possibly parts of our Tai Chi as well. 
And why are we going to be working on those before we get to the Silm Tau? It kind of actually has a lot to do with what I was talking about. So we want to be able to reach people that want to take care of their mind, body, and spirit first. And learning how to defend yourself um, is a great thing. And it's something that I think everyone should know how to do. But sometimes for most people, it's kind of intimidating, scary, right? So we want to be able to, when we put out DVDs and individual courses and stuff like that, we want some of the first ones to be the things that help a pot, a person, sorry, I almost said a body, help a person who has a body um, <laughs> to be able to work on their mind, body, and spirit first and, and then start working through there. So we're going to start refilming some of that stuff first. And then uh, shortly after that will be the refilming of the Silent Tau in a much more in-depth format like you saw in the seminars, uh, or sorry, webinars. And um, we're looking forward to that. There's just so many great things that we have planned and we are so looking forward to spending the rest of 2018 and beyond with all of you and to be able to share that. So more information about the seminars will be out next week. Um, if you did already get a ticket to Empower, give me a email at support at so I can take care of you and help you out with that. Um, I don't think anyone has yet, but just in case, I just want to make sure I, I make sure that you get the help that you need. So email me at support at uh, Just, you know, forward me your receipt or whatnot, and I will uh, help you either get a refund or if I can't, I will make sure to comp you um, on that portion for our next uh, seminar that you attend. So I just want to make sure that, you know, in case anyone has already, you know, we're not going to leave you high and dry um, or anything like that. We just, uh, like I said, after reevaluating everything and really looking at the details of the event, we know that our services to you, our family is best served doing a full NDN seminar um, versus just, you know, coming out and seeing us for like, you know, an hour or something like that. And then also for those of you that are wondering, because, you know, Sifu Lair and I were going to be talking about the business portion of what's going on. Um, just so you know, um, we are still going to be teaching those principles, but we're going to be teaching those to our ambassadors, aka our affiliates for Enter Shaolin. And that's going to be coming up uh, as well. We were supposed to already start those, but there's been all kinds of crazy things going on, which all of you that have been paying attention, you already know. And then, you know, my mom uh, passing away unexpectedly, uh, that definitely <laughs> slowed things and some progress down. Um, but we're back and we are ready for action. And I'm going to keep doing my systems to keep myself healthy, my body and spirit, so I can be of great service to all of you and to give you my personal best and my personal all. So I hope that you will also do the same for yourself so you can give your loved ones, your coworkers, your business, whatever, you know, all the people that you, you interact with on a daily basis, your best and your all as well. So um, lots of great things are on the horizon. We're super excited to have you along and I will talk to you next week. Below this video, you're gonna find all the new training that's available to you, and I hope you enjoy, and be sure to leave us a comment below in the comment section. If you like this post, feel free to share it and uh, spread the word, and we love you all, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.